Hey guys, what is going on? Chris here with Shughead Gaming, bringing you my review for Crisis Brigade, developed by Sumo Lab and released on PSVR this February 5th, 2019, for an estimated price of $6. Of course, that depends on your region. As always, this was reviewed on a PS4 Pro. Crisis Brigade is a virtual reality action-filled first-person shooter that lets players take on the role of a SWAT trooper and deal with a hostage situation in a bank robbery. Obviously, taking on the time crisis type genre in VR, does this shooter deserve your attention? Let's find out. As always guys, if you like this video, please hit that like button, and if you'd like to see more PSVR content from me, please consider subscribing, and for video updates, hit that bell icon. And remember, if you want more PSVR news and info, check Shughead Gaming out on Twitter and Facebook. To kick off this review, let's take a look at graphics. Crisis Brigade is a basic visual package, coming off like a much cleaner and less foggy version of another PSVR shooter, the Perfect Sniper. Graphics are sharp in the headset, but their one step up from Minecraft style visuals really lacks anything to write home about. Lighting and particle effects are practically non-existent, and texture detail across the board is very limited, whether looking at weapons, environments, or character models. Character animations are also limited, and like the graphics overall, don't hurt to look at, but in the same breath are very forgettable as well. With the one single level being the majority of the game, once you've seen the streets and bank interior, you've basically seen all there is to offer, so visual monotony will set in quickly even after just a few playthroughs. At the end of the day, what's here is polished and works just fine, but it just ends up feeling a little bit too tech demo-y to me. Sounds are up next. Like the visuals before, sounds here are a bit bare bones. Ambient world sounds basically consist of the police station office chatter in the main menu, the bustling city streets sound scheme, and of course, with the screams of nearby victims and hostages. Overlaying these are the generic sounds of gunfire, and that's about it. The sparse and undynamic sound mix is even more glaring when you're down to a final baddie in a stage, and the sound mix goes completely dead, until one of you shoots. There's basically no music to speak of throughout, so there isn't even that to fill in the gaps between firefights. Gun sounds of your own weapons are, like I said, of the generic variety, and really lack any authenticity or oomph to make them much fun to shoot. There's no variety in bullets hitting various surfaces, or any such minor effects to help liven up the sound mix either. As a result, the final sound package is pretty unspectacular. And that brings us to gameplay. Crisis Brigade obviously wants to channel the retro fun of the light gun series Time Crisis. While some moments of arcade fun are present here, the overall package is just too light on anything to really have much of an impact. As a SWAT team member, you are tasked with taking care of the bank robbers in a bank robbery hostage situation gone bad. The game consists of one 7 minute mission with branching paths as you push in from the city streets to a final showdown in the bank's vault. On Steam, Time Crisis Brigade is listed as an early access title, and Sony really needs to start listing games as such to inform buyers of what they are getting into regardless of the price. AI is routine based, so repeat playthroughs simply allow you to memorize their patterns instead of feeling like you're in a live firefight, and the branching paths really only offer a minimum of additional replay value since you eventually end up in the same place anyway. The game offers two modes, a normal mode that is a bit on the easy side of things and a hard mode that brings in a one-shot kill system and is so hard it really lacked much in the way of fun for me. There's a leaderboard so score chasers may find a bit more replay value and fun factor in that hard mode than I did. So yeah, there isn't much game here, but is the gunplay at least fun? Nope, not really. This game can be played with either two move controllers, a DS4 or the aim controller. Using two move controllers has you ejecting and reloading your own clips, and while that adds a bit of fun, the overall tracking in the game just felt a bit floaty, and as a result made for some less than fun reload attempts when under fire. As a result, the aim controller with a change to an assault rifle as a default and automatic reloading was my option of choice. Unfortunately, while gun tracking was good when you were right in front of the camera, I often found myself having to duck and move into cover, even though the game says to stand in place and tracking often went to total crap, resulting in some very frustrating deaths. This was drastically compounded by the game's mechanic that cuts to a black screen between stages before dropping you into the line of fire, telling you to find cover, but not giving you the ability to shoot until a moment later, again resulting in more than a few rage moments in a game I was barely enjoying anyway. 
There is no locomotion options, very little weapon variety, and little to no enemy AI, resulting in a game that, like I said, really feels like an early access title and not a complete game ready for mass consumption. Crisis Brigade really should be played standing up with a decent amount of room required as you will be moving left and right and up and down for cover. Since there's no locomotion in this game whatsoever, motion sickness should be at a minimum. And that brings me to Fun Factor in my final review. Yeah, Crisis Brigade isn't without a bit of dumb arcade gun fun, but with a hit or miss tracking system, bland gunplay, and an overall sense of just being undercooked, I honestly just didn't have much fun here. I rate games on the basis of buy, wait for a sale, or burn it to the ground. At $6, this game is already cheap, and it should be. For $6, it's hard to say wait for a sale, it's cheap, and not a total dumpster fire, and with aim support, there could be enough here to give you your money's worth. But make no mistake, this is PSVR shovelware, and keep your expectations as such. Anyways guys, that's it for me. If you like this video and not based on the game, hit that like button. And if you'd like to see more PSVR content from me, please consider subscribing. And for video updates, hit that bell icon. I'll catch you guys on my next video.